Hello friends, welcome to Alankar Pharmacy classes again. In the today's class, I am going to tell you about the concept of boundary layer. So let's start without wasting our time. First of all, to understand this concept, let us imagine any kind of a stream of a fluid which is flowing over the stationary surface. And this kind of stationary surface that I am representing here in a black line, imagine that or this palm is the stationary surface over which the liquid is moving. The layer which is almost near to the surface of the fluid will have a maximum velocity that is represented by u infinity here and the layer which is very close to the stationary surface or the surface of solid moving at the almost negligible speed and this is because of the forces of attraction and such kind of forces may be a van der Waal forces or the adhesion forces that exist between the liquid and the solid molecules and that's why the liquid or the layer of fluid which is very close to the surface of the solid will actually move at the zero velocity and such layer presented here by this green line. Speed of layer will increase gradually as we move further to the this stationary layer which exists over the surface of the solid. There are actually two assumptions. The first assumption is there is no slip condition. Uh, if the liquid slip over the uh, solid surface, that means uh, the, there will be a no existence of a boundary layer. This concept will not be applicable in that case. So that there should be a no slip condition. And another assumption that the fluid is incompressible. If the fluid is compressible, that means there will be a, an involvement of another force. When we, we are dealing with the boundary layer, uh, this concept is again will not applicable over there. And that's why we are assuming here two things. First thing that there is a no slip condition. Another assumption is the fluid is incompressible. So the solid and liquid may have a attract attraction forces that we have already discussed. That's why such kind of uh, layer will start moving at the a relative velocity. Now what is this relative velocity? That relative velocity exists when the velocity of the layer is different as compared to the others. So such kind of velocity if exists in the any kind of uh, movement of fluid that means there is a existence of a relative velocity. For example, the liquid which is very close to the surface of the solid we is having a almost a velocity equals to the zero. When we move upwards, the velocity of the liquid which are moving just above the this stationary surface is having a more velocity as compared to the layer which is very close to the solid surface. So there, there is a difference in velocities of the layer of fluid and that means here is a existence of a relative velocity and if there is a existence of velocity that means there is some part in the fluid where this relative velocity exists and the part of the fluid in which this relative velocity exists is actually known as boundary layer. Here the, this is shown by the another graph also here you can see that there, there is an existence of a relative velocity and this relative velocity it is, uh, can be written as du by dy and du by dy will not equals to the zero and this is because the velocity of different layers of fluid is having a different values and that's why there is a existence of a relative velocity and in this particular segment the du by d, dy value is not equals to zero but when we move towards the surface of a liquid there is a gradual increase in the velocities of the liquid and the layer which is almost near to the uh, surface of the liquid will have a uh, velocity almost equals to the u infinity and in that case the du by dy or the value of relative velocity will be actually equals to the zero segment or the particular area in which the relative velocity exists is actually a boundary layer so let us move to the our another uh, segment that is the newton's law of viscosity according to the newton's law of viscosity 
the shear stress that is represented by tau is directly proportional to the rate of shear strain. In this example, what will happen? The Actually, the shear strain will equal to the relative velocity and that's why we can write that the tau or the shear stress that is uh, applicable in any such kind of liquid and that is because of the relative velocity only and that's why the shear stress or tau is directly proportional to the du by dy and here if we remove the this uh, proportionality value then what will happen we have to put any constant value that is a tau will equals to the mu multiply by du by dy and this mu is actually the dynamic viscosity the si unit of tau is a newton per meter square and the value of mu that is the dynamic viscosity that is newton second per meter square and as we have already discussed the region that is outside the boundary layer if it is a boundary layer then the region outside the boundary layer the value of tau will be equals to almost zero because there is no relative velocity that means there is no shear stress and if there is no shear stress exists uh, definitely the tau value will be equals to zero as we have already discussed that the uh, layer of uh, liquid which is close enough to the surface of the solid will have a least velocity and that's why the initial velocity in the boundary layer here you can see this is the boundary layer the layers which are very close to the boundary layer the flow of fluid in such kind of layer a laminar and why it is laminar because initially the viscous forces are dominant and uh, here the, there is an introduction of a another concept and that is the Reynolds number. So what is Reynolds number? Reynolds number is the ratio of the inertial forces divided by the viscous forces. Since the uh, layer of uh, liquid which is very close to the surface of the solid is moving at very slow speed and that's why the initially what will happen the viscous forces are dominant and that's why the flow of fluid is laminar and the layers which are close to the surface of the liquid inertial forces will now become dominant as compared to the viscous forces then what will happen the flow of liquid will become turbulent as we know that the value of Reynolds number equals to the ratio of a inertial forces divided by the viscous forces and we have already discussed that the layer which are very close to the surface of the solids are moving at the very less speed and that's why the in initially what will happen the viscous forces are dominant and that's why the flow is laminar but gradually what will happen the flow is then converted slowly into the turbulent flow because when the velocity of the layers increases the viscous forces will no longer dominate and that's why the here in this case initial forces play an important role and that's why the value of Reynolds number increases and now what will happen the flow of fluid will no longer be a laminar as we know that there is a, a transition phase exists between the laminar flow and the turbulent flow so here in such kind of case what will happen this transition phase depends upon the disturbances of the flow of fluid this transition phase on an average it starts when the Reynolds number value is uh, almost equals to the 10 to the power 5 but as I have already told that it actually depends upon the disturbances of the fluid flow if the flow of liquid is uh, less disturbed it may starts when the uh, value of Reynolds number uh, may be doubled that is 2 into 10 to the power 5 or for very less disturbed liquid it may be starts from the value 10 to the power 6 value of Reynolds number can be written in the equation form also here it is written in the form of a rho multiplied by u infinity multiplied by the x divided by mu rho the density of fluid the u infinity is the free streamline velocity of a fluid x is distance of flow of fluid from the leading edge so now what is this leading edge leading edge is the the point where the uh, boundary layer starts so this equation can also be written as the uh, Reynolds number equals to the u infinity multiplied by x divided by v and this v is actually the ratio of mu divided by rho and which is actually the kinematic viscosity so this is all with the today's class hope you all have liked my video so please do share with your colleagues uh, who are in the search of this topic so thank you friends thank you
Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the latest video and updates.